an opportunity to welcome you more formally, Guo Fang. Of course, Guo Fang's been in the department now since July, and so she's become a, a regular colleague. We see her in the hallways and department meetings, and delighted to have her here. Um, I had prepared a four-page speech um, <laughs> full of the lists of her accomplishments, but fortunately for you, somebody supplied me with a much shorter version. So I'm going to read that shorter version. First off, just to let you know something about uh, Guo Fang's background. Guo Fang's uh, BA is from uh, Hubei, make sure I'm pronouncing that right, University in China, and a master's from Wuhan University in China, a, a PhD at the University of Saskatchewan. Finally, she saw the light and came and did a postdoc here at UBC. We were delighted to have her here before I came, but everybody who reported on it was delighted. Um, and um, her post-PhD employment record includes a period of time as an adjunct faculty, faculty member at the University of Saskatchewan, um, at UBC as a postdoc teaching fellow when she was with us, then at SUNY Buffalo assistant prof, and an associate and professor at Michigan State University. So already, um, mid-career or even earlier, a pretty distinguished route that she has taken to join us. Um, just let me read this part from the, from the uh, information that was provided me. Dr. Lee is a leading international researcher in immigrant children's language and literacy education. Her program of research aims to improve the life successes of immigrant and minority students by addressing the cultural, linguistic, instructional, and structural barriers in their literacy learning and academic achievement in both school and at home. Her research, her research identifies the literacy resources and practices that exist in immigrant families as these are critical to students' successful transition between school and home. Based on these resources and practices, Dr. Lee establishes innovative and systematic ways that teachers and schools can tap into the cultural resources and linguistic knowledge from students' homes, from students homes to support their school-based literacy efforts. Dr. Lee, Lee's research is grounded directly in learners' complex multiple language and literacy practices in and outside of school and in teachers' everyday teaching practices. Her knowledge of these complex language contexts expertly positions her to share her insights with educators about specific cultural practices and the importance of culturally relevant approaches to educating these children. Dr. Lee's research will also address the need to examine current language and educational policy and practice in globalized context. So not only was that shorter than what I would have said, it's better than what I would have said. Way more condensed. I just want to note that despite the fact that she has three children and a new position and has moved across the country. In 2015 alone, Guo Fang Li gave nine invited presentations, published a co-edited book, three journal articles, and three book chapters, and just recently, another co-edited book came out. She has won the uh, awards from the Literacy Research Association, the U.S. Association of Chinese Professors of the Social Sciences, and AERA. Very recently, she won the Mid-Career Award from the Second Language Research Special Interest Group of AERA and the Carol Weinstein Outstanding Research Award from AERA's Classroom Management. So welcome to UBC. Welcome to LLED. I've been doing work that um, I think that I'm trying to level the playing field for immigrant my, uh, and minority children. This is the theme of my work. And as many of you know, that the number of English language learners, both, both in the USA and the Canada, has been very high, especially in Canada. Now, in urban centers, probably 20 to 50 percent, some schools, 80 percent are, are English language learners, and many of them are Canadian-born and, and farm-born as well. So um, research has shown that many uh, urban centers that Yale have been denied access to high-quality teachers, rigorous curriculum, and uh, academic resources. And, um, Many of them have persistent achievement gaps and lower graduation rate from our own uh, least work. And so in order to level the playing field, I've, I have been working on uh, actually two major areas. One is that I think that we need competent teachers who can help uh, learners, you know, minority learners, to learn the necessary academic literacy skills, skills and also understand their learning in context. Uh, we also need to work on empowering parents uh, who can advocate for their children and for themselves. As uh, uh, Delise um, Oliver Valles said, we not only need to level, in, uh, the field, level the playing field, but we also make sure that kids have the, the, a hat, a bat, a ball, and the equipment to, to level the field. 
to, to be able to be successful. So my work has been um, on, on four areas. Uh, one is the immigrant and minority children's home literacy practices. So I investigated, I actually did a, a lot of field work in uh, immigrant minority children's homes and engaged with their parents. And then after I, I actually moved to, from home to the school setting um, to look at the relationship between immigrant and minority home literacy practices and the mainstream schooling. And w my research has found that there's uh, cultural, cultural differences and uh, um, edu differences in educational beliefs in how language literacy should be taught, how school should be done. Uh, between different cultures, especially between Asian culture or uh, especially Chinese culture and and the Canadian mainstream Canadian and mainstream American culture, um, so teachers actually uh, from different cultural backgrounds have different beliefs um, in in how language and literacy should be taught, and this actually eventually uh, affects how children learn um, and how how they transition between school and home. Uh, in one of my research, uh, one of the children noted that my mom thinks my home is a school, and so because the parents believe that mainstream Canadian schools are just about play and not learning, so they, the parents actually have more structured um, uh, school at home. So they have 30 minutes uh, some English, 30 minutes Chinese, and, and 15 minutes recess, and so, so it's um, it's very different. So the children actually, uh, the parents actually enact uh, a Chinese school in the home setting because they have different beliefs. So uh, in, in another area of my research has been on Asian uh, children's social process of learning. And my research has been looking at model minority, how model mi the model minority myth has been uh, creating a false image of Asian children as successful, not needing any support. And so my research, and probably many, some of your research as well, has uh, found out that uh, many aging children are not model minorities. They are experiencing a lot of learning difficulties um, because of different factors, especially uh, the, the discontinuity between school and home. Uh, then after moving from home, school, I focus on teachers. I start to pay attention to teachers, uh, which is a logical step. We're, my own search for, for answers for some of the uh, issues that confronting immigrant and minority children. I did a research on in-service teachers, um, looking at their experiences teaching, uh, teaching immigrant and minority children in different settings. Uh, one, one setting is more affluent um, neighborhoods like Vancouver uh, and Richmond. And one set is urban, urban, uh, very no SES urban centers in the U.S. Uh, found out that very strikingly, regardless of social class, um, there are many similarities in terms of teacher struggles, and especially in terms of cultural and uh, um, aspects of um, different perceptions of learning. So. So after looking at in-service teachers, I start to look at uh, inward for uh, pre-service teachers. So, so I'm getting there. <laughs> so right now, uh, so this is I'm here and um, looking at from home literacy, to home school connection to teacher learning, and and right now I'm actually looking at preparing pre-service teachers um, to teach English language learners. Um, I did a. A big study, actually, looking at faculty and instructor, instru uh, faculty and teacher education faculty and instructors' perspectives on um, t their, how they prepared uh, uh, pre-service teachers to teach English language learners. And I also look at that. I also examined the, the, the curriculum and this, especially the syllabus uh, that how individual faculty and instructors look at. Um, uh, pre uh, infused uh, EL-related content, and I also look at uh, pre-service teachers' own perspectives on how they feel they're prepared to teach English language learners. Um, I'm, right now, I'm, looking, I'm working on the analysis of the, this project. Um, actually, the finding is very clear. At all levels, they don't feel prepared. And one of the major issues is the faculty expertise and, and, the, and the, con the content of the uh, the uh, state required curriculum that doesn't leave much room for for inf infusing EALs. So, so a lot of times the uh, 
pre-service teachers, uh, if if the fac faculty members have the uh, the motivation and the expertise, they get more uh, content in relating EELs. Mm -hmm. But for for faculty members or uh, courses that, that do do not have the uh, expertise, they they often miss that content. So it's very uneven. And uh, so that's the sort of very brief um, uh, conclusion of that. And we have been presenting this at different conferences. Um, so we're getting there and getting published. In addition to that, I'm also working on three uh, book projects right now, um, which is, uh, so one is about heritage language learners in global context. This is a sequel to the first volume that we, we just published uh, on Chinese heritage learners in North American context. Uh, so we're looking at how, uh, how local, local context and the globalization impact Chinese learners around the world and what are the similarities and challenges and, uh, and differences in, in global context. For example, in, in, um, in South Africa, in, in uh, Spain, uh, in Indonesia, in Hong Kong, in Taiwan, in Japan, how, how in the UK, in Australia, New Zealand, how various different local contexts shape different experiences of the same group of students who may share similar cultural traditions. Um, and I also just um, uh, received invitation to write a book on culture identity and power in English language teaching uh, by Shanghai University Press. Um, and, and I also work on uh, a book with Teachers College um, on English language learners, how uh, focused on how some learners have developed an agency to succeed and uh, others don't. And I'm trying to understand this, uh, the, the individual differences on, on learners. So that's what I'm working on right now. And, uh, and I'm going to talk very briefly about what we're uh, going to do uh, very next, in next semester actually, um, with Lee Gunderson. Uh, I'm, we're starting a project um, looking at just combining the research findings from his study and my own studies that how, look at how Chinese immigrant students' biliteracy development trajectory in, in Canada. We want to use a longitudinal um, study design to look at within ethnic variants um, because uh, both his study and my study has have found out that there's a lot of within ethnic differences. We want to look at how Cantonese speakers, um, Mandarin speakers, and, and boys and girls, and low SES Chinese immigrants versus high SES Chinese immigrants, how those are related to, how the biliteracy development are related to those factors. So we're hoping to work with Robert again very soon to develop proposal for SHRC, hopefully. Um, and we're working on the preparation. Um, so another focus, um, I just put in a very short proposal to Heather. Uh, hopefully start while looking at, uh, as a, this is very dear to my own experience as a mother and a parent, uh, to look at how Asian children's extracurriculum activities and mental health. Um, I was interviewed by a, a local newspaper on this topic and I also myself uh, trying to understand um, and this topic. So we're starting on a very small project on this and hopefully um, will lead to something um, better or bigger. Um, so this is another official work is uh, continue to work on in-service teachers. Um, one area I've been wanting to work on is that to look at the collaboration and also uh, probably possible the, the reality of separation between content area teachers and EL teachers, how share the data, how they share data uh, and the instructional decision making on English language learners. And another area I want to work on is the, uh, the two group of teachers, how to, how, how to help them to do team teaching that I have done. Started this project in the U.S. and I hope to continue with this. And finally, um, this one is, um, have been, I've been trying to uh, do this for a long time. Hopefully I will have more time and to, to work on, on technology enhanced instruction for uh, EALs. So thank you very much. I'll stop here.